Welcome back to the Film Cynics on CFAX 1070. You can hear Brian Coffin in the background. Brian, how are you? I'm doing good. I just got a huge rant off my chest about reading and films. <sighs> Brian doesn't like reading Just books. wait till it's up on our website. It's going to be legendary. <laughs> Okay, well, we're joined this week by uh, Kai Parker, the Kiter man from the list. He's uh, he's brought himself a list with uh, with him to share with us. Uh, what do you got for us, Kai? Um, excuse me, I'm choking on water. Um, <laughs> well, we had talked about doing a holiday list, which you know anyone could do. So I wanted to try something just a little bit off. So I thought I, I'd round it up: uh, films that revolve around holidays that don't really need to. Okay, uh, one of my favorite discussions. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, number three might spark something between you two. But, um, <laughs> We've been down that road. <laughs> yeah, so I, I came up with my top five, and my only criteria was that the, the, the holiday be very prevalent within the film, but it also not really be important to telling the story. The story could be told without the holiday. Okay. So my number five for this is a classic from when I was a kid. It is uh, Gremlins. Ah, so that is a Christmas film, but not really a, a Christmas, Christmas film, according to our definition. Around the Film Cynics Campfire, we say if, if the characters are not, one of the main characters is not transformed by the power or magic of Christmas, then it's not necessarily a Christmas film. It's just a movie that happens at Christmas, just like Gremlins. And this is, the only reason I think it's set at Christmas is because he's a Christmas gift, but he could have just as easily been a birthday present. See, I always thought he was a birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> it could go either way. But I love this film. It, it's, it's so, it's, it, you can't really put it into a genre. It's not really a family film. It's not really a horror film. It's not really a comedy it's just, and it's it's great. It's like an 80s kid film, which were awesome because 80s kid films shouldn't have been seen by kids. No, yeah, I know. I went to, <laughs> I saw it at the drive-in with my folks, and I was thinking, like, why did you bring me to see yeah, this? Yeah, it I'm really terrified. is a dark film. There's a scene where the mom kills a gremlin in a blender, a microwave, and Mike Myers style with a knife. It's yes. Just dark things happening. I watched this recently, and I was freaked out. And I was like, <laughs> what is this movie about? I don't remember it being so gross. <laughs> oh, man. All right, what's next? Uh, my number four is a rom-com. I really do love films. Um, I'm the guy that thinks the next Kate Hudson, Matthew McConaughey film is really going to work. <laughs> really? You know? A lot but, of, yeah, okay. and I'm usually let down, but I cheer for them. However, there's I'm, one rom-com that I think really succeeds, and that is Love Actually. All right. We're going to let that, unless there's a silence hanging in the room. I did not like this movie. How do you not like this movie? Because it's about uh, uh, love and finding love and dealing with the loss of love and love and friendship like you two share. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I mean, it's pretty, you're right, but I heard so much hype going into this film when it when it was released, and I went and I watched it, and I was just I didn't think it was that funny. I didn't really buy into any of it, and I just walked away kind of disappointed. I was like, all right, it was okay. Everyone was freaking out over Love Actually, and I was like, all right, let's simmer down now. Yeah, it's not, it's not, not good. freak outable, but it's but it's, at the time when it came out, everyone was like, oh, it's so good, it's so amazing, and I was just like, whatever. It's out it, of it, it, also I, hate kids. I do actually hate kittens. I think it set a dangerous precedent because movies of its kind, of its uh, of its ilk, have come out since, and they're really substandard. Valentine's Day being a great example. A, a great example of that. Oh, and that, well, that probably wouldn't work on this list. But I will say this. It falls on Christmas, really doesn't have to other than the song that Bill Nye sings, which is fantastic, but he could have just as easily sang a different song. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to go rewatch that again. Maybe I was in a pessimistic mood. I like Hugh Grant in it. I like you, Grant. Laura Linney's good in it. Liam Neeson. Oh, he's great Alan in it. Alan Rickman. Yeah, and Matthew Vaughn's wife, Claudia Schiffer's in it, too. And how about the, the star of The Walking Dead? Oh, that's right. He's the dude who, like, loves the girl. Bringing it back around, fellas. That's a guy. Oh, okay, I don't know that movie Kai well just enough. pulled out a power move on us. That's <laughs> awesome. All right, what's next, buddy? Uh, number three. I'll let you gentlemen handle this. It is Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> we have gone over this many, many times on our shows. It's got Run DMC doing a Christmas carol, dude. I know, but it doesn't have to happen at Christmas. <laughs> Steve tried to pull this on me years ago, being like, top five Christmas movie. He tried to throw Die Hard in there, and I was like, no way. I, Die ho, Hard could ho, happen. Ho, now I have a machine gun. Whatever. Die Hard I could happen on way. any other holiday, any other day, and it would still be a fantastic movie. Yes. Well, it's per it is exactly why it's perfect for this. I will say that I could, it's a film I want to throw in come Christmas time, because it does capture the film a little bit, but it's completely unnecessary. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it can happen any time. It's good for its own reasons, not because of Christmas. If he didn't have the Christmas wrapping tape, how would he have stuck that, he uh, had that gun to his back to shoot things. the dude at the end? He was in an office building. There's tape everywhere. It's an empty office building. There still would have been much. tape lying around. There's uh, always tape. You can always find tape. Yeah, well, McLean would have slid his skin and slid it underneath next to the bone because <laughs> that's how McLean rolls. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? <laughs> Uh, my number two. What is my number two? Oh, my number two is Groundhog's Day. Yeah, nice. I love this movie. Yeah, and I and 
I guarantee, I, if you ask anyone here in the States, uh, Groundhog's Day is easily the most popular holiday of the year. <laughs> um, I, it's a really good film. Now, I, I posted this list on my site, and somebody gave me a little bit of, you know what, for it. But um, they said that it, 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 you do need the, what is he, Puck, what is Puxatawney Phil? He's a, he's a groundhog. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> they said he is necessary in the story because there's a whole scene when he's driving and all that. But this, this could have oh, been anything. even set at the, you know, the Madison, Wisconsin Cheese Festival. Agreed. Or anywhere else. But it is a fantastic comedy, and I don't know why more comedies don't use time travel to, to try and tell their stories. This is really like a right background comedy. kind of time travel, too. It wasn't really overt. I mean, it was stuck, and that was part of the story, but really there wasn't... Otherwise, it wasn't really spoken of. There's none of the mechanics of it were explained. No, it didn't, it didn't matter why it was happening. It was just it was happening. happening. It was great. I love Bill Murray in this. I love how it's kind of like at the beginning, it's really funny and kind of slapsticky almost. Mm -hmm. But it gets kind of dark and serious at times, which is kind of through me. It's the only time I've liked Andy McDowell in a movie. Really? Yeah. I didn't even like her in Hudson Hawk, and I love Hudson Hawk. I know. Hawk. How do you love Hudson Hawk? Steve has oh, weird Kai, toy choices for conversation for, for another movies. time, buddy. I'm a big Roadhouse guy, so I can't really complain. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and well, I mean, what is she more folksy in? Is she more folksy in this or more folksy in Michael? I, I, I don't know. You're picking some weird movies that I've never seen. <laughs> Never seen Mike. Okay, like anyway. years ago, and it's never stuck in my mind. Moving right along, number one on your list. Oh, uh, it is the cheese tastic disaster film from Roland Emmerich. What he's tried to rematch <laughs> with his career ever since. It is Independence Day. Oh man, yeah. Uh, I, I rewatched this film last night. It is so great, but the, it, it's set at Independence Day, and it's really only so Bill Pullman can give his big cheesy speech, which I love. <laughs> People hate it. It gives me goosebumps. Really. It makes we want to fly a plane, dude. We Is do it? not. We do not have a Canadian equivalent to it in this uh, Canada country. Day. Well, no, but uh, we do have a Canada Day. We do not have a Canada Day movie. <laughs> we should. What I'm but is it actually set on Independence Day? I thought it was just called Independence no, Day. No, they actually. It, 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 the film follows July second, July third, and then Independence Day. They actually put the date oh. on the film. I haven't seen it in forever. I didn't even realize. That. I thought it was just called that because they fight for their independence against the aliens. <laughs> they do, but they do it on Independence Day, so it makes that speech so much more moving. But like you said on your list, it could happen. This movie could happen on any day. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's completely unnecessary. It's it's the but the thing is, it's kind of like the War of the Worlds for my generation. This came out when I was like right. in high school or when I was graduating high school. This is my alien film, and it's cheesy, and I love it to death. I think we're all the same age it's, here. It's like it's like Randy Quaid <laughs> pre trying to get into our country uh, crazy. Hey, he can stay because he was in Christmas Vacation and all the vacation movies. And I agree with you, Kai. I don't understand how ID4 uh, is an abbreviation of Independence Day, yeah, but is it, whatever. I'm thinking maybe it's like a Star Wars thing. Like he had three films planned out that he didn't make, so he started <laughs> with the fourth film or something. Well, like why do you – I don't uh, think Roland Emmerich thinks uh, that big. <laughs> oh, he thinks big, sir. Oh, I know he thinks big at the time, but not that big. All right, it's a, a great planner. list. Um, you can check it out on our website or on Kai's website. That's kispace.wordpress.org? Uh, com. Com, dot com. My apologies. That's okay. Um, and, yeah, many other lists just like it, um, very well thought out and always funny. Um, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to break some titles out of the vault. Stay with us.